Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my review of Ubuntu Budgie 1810, which is codenamed Cosmic Cuttlefish. This comes with a Budgie 10.4, or with partial elements of the 10.5 desktop. And the big new feature this time around is a whole new selection of applets. As well as an uplift of various applications, including most of the GNOME applications which are at version 3.30. And Firefox has replaced Chromium for the default web browser. Well, starting with memory usage, and as we can see with standard GNOME desktops, it is very chunky on memory usage at 780 meg with nothing much open at all. With Ubuntu Budgie 18.10, we get the Linux kernel 4.18, which includes improvements to the USB 3.2, USB Type-C, support for the latest Intel CPUs, and some improved power saving measures. You also get Mesa 18.2.2, and Xorg 1.20.1. I decided to change the theming in Ubuntu Budgie from the default, just because I don't really like default, it looks plain and boring and hasn't really changed much in the previous versions. Unfortunately it's quite easy to do, go across the default settings and you can easily switch the appearance, including downloading various different themes. I've gone with Evo Pop because it reminds me of Solus OS. The default layout of the desktop is you get a plank on the left hand side and a panel at the top. The panel at the top is actually fairly sparse. I've really gone to town adding all these different applets to it. So by default, you get the application searcher, time and date, and a few of these different icons on the right-hand side. One of the new ones is caffeine mode, which will disable the lock screen and screensaver. This new notes applet was pre-installed. The Raven menu on the right-hand side allows you to look at the time, date, and calendar, controls the music, volume control, access to the full settings menu, lock screen, shut down, and you can look at the notifications as well. This is access to some of the default settings in Budgie. We can choose to go for a dark theme. Not bad, not bad. And you can customize the top panel. So let's take a look at some of these new applets. And one you may notice here is a global menu. That is an applet I installed, and for the most part it does seem to work, except for snap-based applications. And for GNOME applications, we get this odd layout anyway, where you've got uh, half the controls are stuck in the application title bar, which does look a bit messy, really. The global menu does look a little bit too large, really. All the text is emboldened, and it only just fits on here. Earlier on, I had a few more items in the center part of the top panel, which actually overlaid the global menu, so I couldn't actually access help. So, not very helpful. <laughs> Get an uplifted version of LibreOffice, so now we have version 6.1. The global menu worked for Qt applications, good to see, as well as a variety of applications. Uh, let's see if it works on Firefox as well. Yes, it does. It's all good, except for Snap applications. So I installed GIMP as a Snap, and as you can see, the global menu is not correct here. Most of the menu is actually in the application. Funny, there was another 1810 desktop like that as well. I'm trying to think which one it was. One of the derivatives. So let's take a look at some of these new applets which have been added. So we've got a countdown timer. Well, the time, date, and settings, well, nothing's really changed here anyway, but yeah. That's as it was. Yep, that's as it was. Got a weather applet. Got any guesses how you change the location? Hmm. That is a good question, because if I open the weather, well, for starters, it keeps asking my location. Oh, no, okay. Apparently, if you just click, it goes to it. Yeah, that's... Yeah, those two locations are not the same. And why did it say unknown there? Anyway, I'm getting a bit off track here, aren't I? This applet is called Kangaroo, and it allows you to hop to different locations in your home folder. <laughs> I'm sure it's hop to location. I don't know. Or maybe I'm making it up. So, yeah, you can... Uh, open different items from your home folder relatively quickly. Perhaps it's not as quick as being able to do a search um, like you can in some other distros. Here's a list of the applets that can be added to the Budgie desktop. Yeah, so there is quite a few. So yeah, this is actually a significant improvement over and above the Budgie desktop, which came with Ubuntu 18.04, the long-term support release. So I would say it does actually make Ubuntu 18.10 a more tantalizing prospect to upgrade to. At least you're getting something worthwhile with the upgrade, whilst sacrificing a horrific amount of the support time. As far as usability the system goes, it is very fast and responsive. I've not had any problems here, there's been no crashes. 
end up perfectly fine on functionality using a USB drive in files and being able to eject it easily from the system. So yeah, no problems at all really. Yes, it is all, so yeah, it's all good. The welcome screen is a helpful feature for new users. I noticed they do need to do one update though because they say it comes with lots of useful applications like Chromium. No, as I mentioned earlier, they've changed to Firefox now. But yeah, that was just an observation really. The getting started section provides you quite a few shortcuts to various components and customization for the de budgie desktop, as well as the application update and driver installer. And you can install different browsers. That's, uh, that's been a look at Ubuntu Budgie 1810. I have to say, if I was interested in the Budgie desktop, it would seem an interesting upgrade to take. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.